Hello and welcome back to another Cookie Tech video. So today I'm going to be teaching you on how to make your very own check-in system. The system is customizable and will come for no price and will work for any game. So just right before I show you how to make this system, I'm just going to show you how it works. So I'm just going to hop into play mode and interact with the system. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to be checking myself into the check-in system and then I'll be testing out the doors and testing out the check-in capabilities. Okay, we're now into studio. I'm just going to close that plugin since I don't need it. And we're going to walk up to the computer on that desk. Keep in mind this desk won't come in the system. However, you can customize it how you want. Then I'm just going to click on the screen and you'll notice that I can completely drag this UI around. It's completely draggable. We also have button animations. And let's just check myself in, for example. I'm going to click on the check-in button. I'm going to type in my username. You will also notice that there is an autofill system. So when you type, it will detect which players are in the game, and then it will detect. So now we can see if I click on that check-in button, it will send a little notification. If I click accept, you'll see that I now have access to the door. So let's just go to the door, which is ours. We can see which door is ours by which name our keycard is. And let's just walk up to it, and you'll see it opens. And let's just say we want to go out again, we can just walk to the door, and it'll open for us again. However, if you want to check out, we'll just click the check out button. Drag it to the side so we can just see the animation. We'll type in our username, and then we'll click check out. Then we can click yes, and you'll see the keycard disappears from our inventory, and we are no longer checked into the system. So now that you know how the system works, I'm going to show you how to actually integrate it into your game. If you'd like to download the system, go to the link in the description and click the blue text, which will automatically start the download for you. Since I've already downloaded it, I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. Then I'm going to double click on the folder I want to open. And then this will make it load into Roblox Studio. And once it's loaded, I'm going to show you how to set the system up. And trust me, setting the system up is super, super, super easy. With the power of editing, welcome to Roblox Studio. And we're ready now, so let's set it up. So first of all, we need to go to the workspace. So to get to the workspace, let's make sure our Explorer and Properties tabs are open. I'm just going to close my plugins since I don't need them. Now, if we open up the workspace folder, let me just shrink this tab, it's a bit big. And we go to the workspace folder, open it, you'll see that there's a folder called Cookie Tech Check-In. So this system is really, really simple to set up. All you need to do is drag these models to a specific folder and then ungroup them. So let me show you how to do this. So you see here, this model is called Check-in GUI. All I need to do now is drag the model into GUI, into Starter GUI to be specific, paste it in there, and then I'm going to ungroup the model. I'm going to do this by clicking right click, or and then clicking ungroup, or I can do this by doing Control U or Command U on Mac. And that's as simple as that. We've already set up the GUI. Now what we're going to do with replicated storage, you guessed it. We're going to ungroup it inside replicated storage. Now that's all done. And now we're going to do the same for service group service. Just drag it into there and ungroup it. And now the final bit, which may require a little bit of editing. Replicated storage will also need a tiny bit of editing, but not too much. We're just going to drag that into the workspace folder. And then we're going to ungroup it. Make sure you followed this step really carefully. Otherwise, it will not work at all. So I'm just going to ungroup it. And now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to delete the spawn slash base plate folder, since we don't need that in our game. That's just a little example. So I'm going to delete that. And now you can see we're just left with our checking system. So let's imagine we want to have multiple computers. All we need to do is duplicate the computers. You can move the computers wherever you want. You can have as many computers as you want. All you need to do is make sure that they're inside of the computers folder and that you haven't edited them. Of course, if you know what you're doing, feel free to edit them. If not, make sure you don't edit them. Same for the doors. If you want multiple doors, 
You can duplicate them, you can move them wherever you want, just make sure they stay in the doors folder. So, if you want to change the room number, I'm presuming lots of you people want to do that, you just have to rename the model. So you can see, if I click on these models, they all have different numbers as their name. Let's say we wanted a door called 200 for instance. Uh, it doesn't have to be 200 though, it can be any number you want. I'm just going to type in 200 on my keyboard, rename it, and now the door will do all the rest. So the door will make sure the door number shows 200, it will make sure that keycard 200 exists, and it will do all of that. And once again, you can move these keys wherever you want, you have full control over it. Now, the final little thing we need to configure is inside of Replicator Storage. So inside Replicator Storage, there's a settings folder, and you can see that this file is completely editable. So I'm going to explain to you what rank lock is. This allows you to lock your system to specific people inside of your group. So let's say that I want my system to be locked to a specific group. I'm just going to type in true into rank lock enabled. And now this means that the system will be locked to people who are in my group and who have a specific rank or higher in my group. So now we need to get my group ID. So I'm going to go to roblox.com. I'm going to go to my group. I'm going to wait for it to load. And then we're going to get the ID. So to get the ID, you don't need to go into settings. We will have to go inside group settings, but we're going to do that a bit later. We're just going to copy the group ID by clicking this number. Your number will be different to mine, very important. Copy and then paste it into the group ID variable. Now let's get the role ID. Let's go to configure group. And then let's go to roles. And you can see when I click on each of the different roles, they have a different number. You see admin has the number three and moderator has the number two and player has the number one. So let's say we want to make sure that people who are moderator or above have access to the system. We'll just copy the ID from moderator and we'll paste it into our settings file underneath the minimum staff rank variable. If we want it to be an admin, we would set it to three and I'm going to set that to three since I want only admins or above to use the system. And that's it. It's as simple as that and no more additional setup is required. This system is completely open source. You can edit the code to your desire and hopefully I see you using this in the future. If you have any questions or would like any help setting up the system, feel free to head over to our Koki Tech Forms, I'll make a new post on the scripting support, and tell us what is going on. Either myself or one of the other scripters will respond to you. I hope this has been a good tutorial and you found it useful, and have an excellent day. That's all from me, goodbye, and thanks for tuning in.